I'm Maggie. Thank you so much for clicking on this video, which is the first installment in a series I'm calling Fashioning Favorites, wherein I analyze the looks of my favorite film and TV characters and recreate their costumes with an eye towards sustainability. If you also love fashion, film, and culture, I hope you'll subscribe. So, why Buffy? I have to do these things, because because when I stop, then she's really gone. But seriously, I'm starting with Buffy for both personal and cultural reasons. Buffy was the first series of which I ever became a super fan. In fact, a small group of friends and I even wore Sunnydale High t-shirts every Wednesday when there was a new episode, and believe it or not, we never got our lunch money stolen. But Buffy also feels extremely relevant to this cultural moment, not only because it's currently streaming on Hulu and because its stars are coming out against creator Josh Sweden, but also because we all seem to be reminiscing about Y2K these days, or for the younger generations who weren't alive enough at the time to be nostalgic about it now, looking at it historically. That feels weird to say. I'm recording this right after the Friends reunion streamed on HBO Max, so it might be worth noting that Buffy started three years after Friends and the shows ended in 2003 and 2004 respectively. Chances are we could gather at least a handful of outfits that are as likely to be worn by Rachel Green as they are by Buffy Summers, but that's another video. Let's take a look then at Varsity Fashion Editor Martha French's piece from 2020 called What Would Buffy Wear? The Undead Influence of the Vampire Slayer's Style. The pull quotes in particular are especially reflective of my interest in using Buffy as an inspiration. She writes that Buffy changed the way fashion is represented in popular culture. So do I even need to bother with all this justification? And also, perfecting the Buffy Summers look all but demands shopping secondhand, rewearing, refining. Well, in case you haven't noticed, capitalism is destroying the planet, so we all need to get used to thrifting and outfit repeating. And French's piece is only the tip of the iceberg. There are numerous Instagram accounts devoted to the show, and many think pieces are using Buffy for fodder. In the last couple years, the show has been written about in Vulture, Screen Rant, MSN, Society19, Paper, the list goes on and on. Next year will mark the 25th anniversary of the show's premiere, so I anticipate this trend will only grow in the coming months. But if you clicked on this video, you're already sold. So without further ado, let's get into the looks. This first look has three Buffy hallmarks, all black, leather, and a square neckline. The all black look tends to be a shorthand for the world of fashion and for the gothic, so it makes sense. To emphasize the darkness of the series color palette, I chose to film this in front of my filthy fireplace, so you're welcome from me and my knees and my awkward poses. As for the leather, I had these pants in my closet already and I got them secondhand from Poshmark. I don't promote real leather, so these are faux, much like the vampires on the show who do not have breath and yet somehow can smoke cigarettes. Speaking of cigarettes, these are actually a little bit like cigarette pants, which I'm sorry is not very late 90s or early 2000s, but it does perhaps speak to the fact that all the big bads on the show, or most of them, tend to use 50s and 60s notions of what it means to walk on the wild side, and then going all the way, of course, to punk influence a la Spike. The final thing I'll note about this outfit is that the top has a square neckline, which is a feature of the era and a staple of Buffy's. I purchased this top from Reformation before the brand came under fire for problematic behavior. I'll let you decide if they're still an ethical company. Speaking of necklines, another staple one for Buffy is the halter featured in this second look. Both looks importantly include tanks. 
as the chosen one, the slayer had the right to bear arms. But um, ching. <laughs> Truly, though, there were a lot of slinky tops at the time. The lilac color of this one, which, by the way, I got from Rent the Runway, is pretty interesting, you might think, as a departure from the show's grungy aesthetic, but pastels were actually quite a signature for the time period and often served as a character device to show Buffy's sweetness and innocence, especially in contrast to other characters like Faith. But I am mostly stealing this analysis from at Buffy the Outfit Slayer, so I implore you to read about that dynamic on that Instagram account, which is quite possibly the best fashion commentary I've ever read. Of course, this wouldn't be a Buffy lookbook video without a long leather jacket, so feast your eyes on this baby. Where did I get it? I borrowed it from my cousin years ago, and never returned it. So if you're watching this, Ashley, I'm so sorry. I think it's important to point out the hair I paired with this look, cheap wig notwithstanding, uh, because the looped half bun ponytail thing was a staple casual hairstyle, especially for Buffy, who almost exclusively prefers her updos to be less, well, up than low and back, because she was a really classy lady except for when she's decidedly not. For instance, I should mention that Buffy's cinematic roots are as a ditzy cheerleader, so she's not a stranger to the high pony in certain moments, especially in earlier seasons. Speaking of Buffy's softer side, my final look really leans into that and even gets a little lazy by letting a slip dress do all the work. When Buffy goes ultra femme, especially as she's starting her college years, it's a great reminder of the tragedy of her position, which is best summed up by these famous lines. But you're, you're just a girl. That's what I keep saying. And that's just <laughs> Buffy in a nutshell. So the slip dress and florals are both in Buffy's wheelhouse. I chose this rental, also from Rent the Runway, showing of course that these styles are back in a big way. I'd really like you to imagine that I'm holding a Starbucks cup here. I wasn't about to go out and get one just for the purposes of this video, and they don't come with the green straw anymore anyway, and don't get me wrong, I'm not complaining about that. I'm glad that single-use disposables are on their way out of fashion, but if I had the Starbucks cup with the green straw, it would place this look squarely in the year 2000. And that's it. And I'll leave you with the most iconic line we all know and love, the hardest thing in this world is to live in it. I really hope you enjoyed this video and will let me know in the comments which look was your favorite and which of your Buffy faves I've left out. For my next project, I'm DIYing a couple dresses in the style of Fran Fine, otherwise known as The Nanny, so if you want to see that video and others like this, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time for another adventure in fashioning favorites. Bye-bye!